What happens when you let one of the greatest action sports athletes in the world have free reign to build a course the likes of which his sport has never seen? Then invite the top drivers on the planet to go head to head and battle it out at a one of a kind race. I don't know, Sal, what could possibly go wrong? This is Nitro Rallycross, and you are watching the Red Bull Signature Series. You got a little, you can use much more. Ba -ba -ba -passion. Ba -ba -ba -passion. Welcome, everybody, to the Red Bull Signature Series. I am your host, Sal Masichella. Travis Pastrana, yes, he is an icon of action sports. From a multi X Games gold medalist to a supercross, motocross, and FMX champion to a fierce off road truck and rally racer. And then there was that stint in NASCAR. Basically, if it's got a motor and wheels, he has competed on it and more than likely dominated in the discipline. Among those disciplines is his passion for rally cross, which makes me say, Travis, what are you up to, sir? Oh, this is just an absolutely awesome experience. The track's amazing. You have so many great drivers. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now, when you were dreaming up this track, what, what was your goal? What was missing, and what did you want to put into the sport? You know, fun. We traveled around the world with Nitro Circus, and we all said, man, let's make the jumps bigger. Let's make them safer if we can, but let's do stuff that's never been done before. And that's something in car racing I didn't feel like was, was out there. A lot of the guys, don't get me wrong, the racing's amazing. You got NASCAR, you got so many great sports with great drivers and great competition. But for us, we want to add a little excitement. Add it for the crowd, but most importantly, add it for the drivers so that when they go out there, it's not just about trying something that's the same every other week and right. trying to get a tenth of a second. It's about doing something they've never done before. The full ascent, if you will. So with that, you got you to gotta put a field that's down for that. Who are the drivers that we're going to see today? Man, I'm really excited because this year, Subaru is an absolutely packed house. Patrick Sandell, Chris Atkinson, definitely Tanner Faust. I mean, Ken Block, definitely the guy I'm most excited to be racing. It's going to get wild out there with him. And then, you know, you have Timmy, who won last year, and his younger brother coming out to do battle again. All right, well, that being said, you should get out there and do that thing that you do on the tracks. I'll take it from here. Good luck to you, Travis. Uh, we're going to send it out to Jack Nichols because there's a green flag and some racing about to go down. Thank you, Sal. Yes, the fans have flooded in for some high-octane rallycross action here in Utah. Alongside me for the call is rallycross race winner, Reese Millen. Thank you. Super excited to see the European competitors up against the American competitors here on home turf. Let's go down to Nikki Shields for more on the course itself. Thanks, guys. Yeah, sad to miss out on the event last year, but this year, prepare to have your minds blown. I've come down to the track to get a real sense of scale and also to see just how the track design is breaking down the barriers of the sport. If you look behind, we can see the three-way crossover. This is an awesome part of the track. We've got the tunnel followed by the tabletop and then the big jump. Also, the track is full of big turns. And let's not forget that these drivers can take multiple lines, so be prepared for maximum action. I think it's fair to say there is only one way to go around this track, and it is 100% attack. Travis Pastrana only knows 100% attack, so let's ride with him on a lap of this course. Here we go, Nitro Rallycross 2019, taking off down the first straight. Well over 100 miles an hour. Uh, we added a little bit of pavement so it actually makes it so the outside and the inside should be equal as you go through the first turn. Hopefully less carnage there. Uh, this is the jump line coming around the outside. Gets pretty tight through here, nice and slick. Make sure you hit your apex good. To the right there is the joker. To the left is an option that you can hit. We try to stay side by side over the jump or at least allow someone else to go beside you so if someone comes up short, it doesn't end in catastrophe. Big, big bull turn to the right. And then as you see, coming over this single, a lot of G-forces, feels like a roller coaster in there, actually feels like a jump. Jump out of that corner, big jump over here, trying to land and get stopped as fast as possible. Trying to get to that apex on the inside is gonna be very, very difficult in the race. I think there's gonna be a lot of passing and a lot of bumping going on there. Super gravelly and rocky through here, it's gonna be interesting how that pans out. And then big old handbrake, sliding this, trying to get as far to the inside as you can. Big old off camber, and then this jump throws the car completely sideways jumping wide open through the gravel, missing the outside, and hopefully coming in first place in Nitro Rallycross.
So that's the course, and this is how the event will work. The fastest two drivers from qualifying will progress straight through to the final. Then we have challenger races A and B. The winners of both of those will make it through to join the top two qualifiers. Then it's the last chance qualifier, two spots up for grabs there for the top two in that final race. With that format in mind, it was the top two from qualifying that would advance straight through to the final. 37-year-old Swede Patrick Sandell was the quickest in the field and booked himself a place on pole position. I'm so happy for Subaru and the boys to be able to have a really good qualifying. We were first in qualifying and now be able to go straight into the main, starting on pole in the final. It's not over yet, but I'm at least in the front row of the final. In rallycross, that means everything. 21-year-old Kevin Hansen will join Sandell on the front row. It's so nice to qualify straight through and to know that you're in that main event and to go for the big one. Tomorrow, you know, I won't be driving anything until the, those last six laps. So it will be really hard work preparing tomorrow and helping Timmy for sure. We need both cars in the, in the main one, I think. He, he really deserves it. So hard to work tonight to really prepare for tomorrow. So it's two Swedes through to the final. Who will be joining them? This is the format for the Challenger races. They're four laps long. You have to take the Joker lap once. You have to do the tabletop once. And the winner advances through to the final. The other cars will advance to the last chance qualifiers. No Scott Speed for this race. He picked up an injury yesterday. So Cabot Bigham, Ken Block and Timmy Hansen will be competing. The winner will go through to the final later on. Away they go, down towards the first corner. It's a pretty decent start from Ken Block on the outside of Timmy Hansen, but Hansen's got the inside. Block sends it all the way around the outside and gets into first place. Immediately, you see Bigham doing the joker lap on this run. But what a good start that was from Ken Block round the outside, Reese. Yeah, super aggressive there by Ken, putting that nose in there, taking place and really dominating this race right from the start. On board we go with Ken Block using the handbrake there to come side by side with Bigham, who's done the tabletop on his first run. And that is why Timmy Hansen has dropped back, because he's done the Joker. The Joker's about four seconds a lap slower than a regular lap. So it's these two that are battling it out up front, but I guess they don't want to be losing too much time to Timmy Hansen, who's in clear air. And you're already seeing different driving styles from both competitors up front here. Ken using a lot of handbrake to rotate the car. Obviously, the front diff is very, very tight. Cabot using that more traditional road racing style, but at the end result, both are super fast, super clean, super committed. So Ken Block out over the line, end of lap one. He's in front of Cabot Bigham there in second place. Then there's a bit of a gap back to this man, Timmy Hansen in third position as it stands, winner of this event last year. And when are these two drivers going to take the Joker lap? Are they going to do it this time or are they going to go for the massive drop jump? And there goes Bigham. So Bigham goes for the Joker. He goes underneath the tunnel and emerges out. And we'll see where he emerges compared to Timmy Hansen. He's just behind. So Hansen now in second, Bigham in third. Ken Block has still got to do the tabletop and the Joker lap. Yeah, you're definitely seeing the, the favoritism to the driving style here to the European setup cars. Ken Block and the Ford Fiesta and then the Peugeot. A lot, a lot of sideways driving, a lot of RPM, and it's really producing the driving style that's required to get a good lap in here. Cabot is just maybe struggling a little bit, transitioning from the US rally style where there's more pavement and car setup and just driving style and, and just coming to grips with it a little bit behind these two leaders. Yeah, the start finish rate is pretty much the only kind of tarmac part on the circuit, and there's rubber flying up from Ken Block's car there. So I wonder if he's got a bit of a puncture. We'll try and keep an eye out on that because it certainly looked as though there was rubber flying off the car. He's going to have to take the joker lap at some point. We're on board with him here. And he goes for the joker lap this time through, does he? Yes. So ducks underneath the tunnel. This is going to give us the idea of where he is compared to the front runners. Is he going to be behind or ahead of Timmy Hansen as he rejoins? He's behind. So Hansen out in front. Bigham in second, but I just wonder if Ken Block's suffering in that Ford. Yeah, you can see the course already is starting to rut up. The drivers are having to be really clean on some of those corners. You, you've got to drive so committed here, but every lap is different, and every lap you're analysing surface changes to place the car in the best position, and definitely there looks like the left rear on Ken is going down. Yeah, so that is going to cause him a lot of trouble. He's still got an opportunity if he gets through to the last chance qualifier, if he finishes the race. But it looks as though last year's winner, Timmy Hansen, as they start the final lap, 
is going to book himself a place in the final. Bigham in second, Block really dropping away now in third place over that little ramp that just flicks them up into the air before the tight left-hander. Timmy Hansen doing a very nice job here. Bigham still chasing him, and it's not all or nothing here for Cabot as they come over that huge drop jump but he will want to progress through straight away if he can. And there's Ken Block sideways over. He's got a punctured tire and he's still taking the jump. That's three wheel drive, full commitment. That is very impressive. And here's Cabot proving me wrong, sticking it to, <laughs> to Hanson, using that understeering clean driving style, getting out of those corners, putting that power to the ground in a straight line. And, and these, these guys have just got a great battle going on here. Final couple of corners. Is Bigham gonna be able to find a way through? Hanson goes super defensive into that final left-hander. They come out over the jump towards the line. Timmy Hansen is just going to have enough to hold on and to win the Challenger race and book himself a place in the final. Big and very close. Ken Block's tire all over the circuit after that. That's going to be one of the challenges this weekend is being clean but being ab aggressive and keeping those tires on those wheels. So Timmy Hansen just holding off to advance through to the final, finishing ahead of Cabot Bigham and Ken Block in third will have a bit of work to do if he wants to repair the car in time for the action later on. But let's go down and hear from Timmy Hansen. He's talking to Nicky Shields. Well, Timmy Hansen, that was a pretty wild race there, particularly into that first turn with Ken Block. But I mean, the strategic decision to use your joker early on, that, well, basically that won you the race, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, I had the start on the straight and I thought there that, okay, this is safe. I'm, so I'm just going to play it safe, not to run wide. And he just sent it around the outside and never thought he could do that. But he made, he, he managed to get into my front and yeah, from there it was nothing I could do but let him pass. So, so then we had went over lots of strategies uh, before and that was one of the scenarios that I'm behind him. So I went to the Joker, we had planned that, I did it, it worked. Uh, then. I pushed so hard to for that one lap. So when Big M went into the Joker, I just got him. So that one lap that I made from the from going into the Joker until getting out ahead, that was so important. Uh, from there, yeah, I, I was in front of him, coming out in front of Block. That was great. So I played it, I think, too safe in the end. I was like, okay, I'm in the lead. I have a gap, so I'll just take it to the finish. And he just caught me up. So uh, I had to be mega defensive in the end. I just waited for him to come on my inside, but, uh, but he didn't. So, yeah, I'm so happy to be through to the finals and join my brother there. Thanks very much. So the 2018 champion will join his brother, Kevin. With only three spots left, who else will make the Nitro Rallycross final? There's much more racing to come. You're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series for Nitro Rallycross from the Utah Motorsport Campus outside of Salt Lake City. Three drivers have advanced directly to the final, but not everyone has had the results they were after. Nikki Shields is with Ken Block. Ken, it was an absolutely brilliant battle into the first turn that we saw with Timmy Hansen. But just looking behind at the state of your tire, how did you complete that race effectively with three tires? Uh, well, that was the biggest jump I've ever done with a, <laughs> a non-tire tire. But you know what? I, the ain't care attitude. I, I was hoping something was going to happen to those two battling out front, so I. I had to be there at the end in case they took themselves out. So I was trying to keep them with them with that tire or not. So I, I did my best, cleared the biggest jump I've ever done with only three tires and it is what it is. Unfortunate luck, but you're still determined today, which is brilliant to see. I mean, you've got to now battle it out in the last chance qualify. What does that mean to your day? Well, I, unfortunately, I'm not even in a good position for the last chance qualifier. So, you know, I, I put in the effort. I'm here to win. I've done everything that I can, but the tires have been failing me, and it is what it is. But I, I'm not in a good position now. <laughs> Being one of the top qualifiers was where I wanted to be, and that's not where I'm at right now. So just got to put my head down and hope for the best in the LCQ. Exactly. Fighting taught there, Ken, and good luck. Fingers crossed you will have four tires in the last chance qualifier, and you'll be back on form. Thank, Thank you. you. Four tyres, not even a requirement for Ken Block sometimes. So this is the second Challenger race, four laps. You have to take the Joker lap and the winner advances straight through to the final and the other cars get a chance in the last chance qualifier. Travis Pastrana starts on pole position, Steve Arpin alongside him and then Tanner Faust and Chris Atkinson, the four drivers ready to race. When the lights turn to green, away they go. On board with Pastrana, who starts on pole in the Subaru, but the Ford immediately round the outside. Aggressive stuff from Steve Arpin, and he's managed to get himself out in front. Tanner Faust immediately 
taking the left turn, which will take him and Chris Atkinson through the tabletop. So immediately, we've got a, a split strategy race. Yeah, definitely. It's a clean way to go. If your start is not that great, you've got to make that split decision without your spotter's in, input and just go with your gut feeling of what feels right. And, and again, you're going to see them group up to here to, together and then obviously separate again. So Arpin out in front. Then it is the Subaru in behind of Travis Pastrana. Then it's Tanner Faust. Then it's Atkinson. And looking to the outside there a little bit, Pastrana tries to get the drive off the corner. But the four almost immediately right back together again. There's the inside look. Pastrana goes through, finds his way past Steve Arpin and into the lead of the race. And a big slide from Arpin as well. Absolutely wheel to wheel. That allows Tanner Faust up into second place. But Pastrana has a bit of breathing space now. Impressive move by Pastrana down the inside there, pretty much using everything that he's He's grown into the sport with motocross background and then using the cushion as well on the outside line to get the drive out of the corner. Just an amazing move here, and that is going to set him up for a great result for the remainder of the event. Arpin from the lead drops down to third place. There goes Pastrana now. He does the big jump, but Tanner Faust takes the joker lap, as does Chris Atkinson behind. We're on board with Tanner Faust as he makes his way around in the VW, and now the four have just spread out a little bit. It's about four seconds you lose taking the joker lap. It's around about a second to a second and a half when you take the tabletop. So Pastrana and Arpin, the two drivers, yet to do the joker lap. So will they do it next time around? They've got two more opportunities to do it. But Pastrana designed this course, so he must have a, a lot of plans in mind. Uh, this type of racing just keeps you on the edge of your seat. You know, you've got cars one, two, three, four, but, but that grouping, that, that strategy and, and that can change here in a split second with you know three different course layouts within a single lap. Whatever the drivers change, decide to do can have a change on the outcome. So Travis Pastrana leading the way, starting the penultimate lap, but now he has to take the joker, or now he will choose whether he takes the joker or not, or whether he saves it to the final lap. He's saving it to the final lap here, Pastrana. So he goes over the huge drop jump again. There goes Tanner Faust over it, followed by Atkinson. So Atkinson and Arpin are going to come out fairly close together this time as they come through that huge banked curve at the right hand. Every corner on this course seems to present a different challenge. Yeah, for sure. You know, in the driver's seat, you're, again, constantly analysing the surface changes. Every lap is, is cleaning off or sweeping off or getting a blue groove or sometimes getting dirtier. So you're, you're not only analysing your competition's placement on the course, but you're also analysing the course conditions as well to make a better move, a better choice that following lap. Round goes Chris Atkinson, tagged into a spin. Arpin and him were going side by side, and Atkinson drops to the back. The Australian falls to the rear of the order, and I wonder, is that a bit of damage there on Arpin's car? He's got a right rear puncture. So both of those drivers coming to trouble on the penultimate lap, and all that means Travis Pastrana out in front can take his joker lap. Will he be able to emerge in front of Tanner Faust? It's the final spot for the winner, up for grabs, and he's just in front Pastrana. Faust is right behind him, half a lap to go. Yeah, that was a little bit dirty on up in there, but, uh, you know, that's, that's racing, pushing the envelope for sure, but P Pastrana out front has just been flawless this entire race. Tanner's trying everything that he can. He's into slight understeer on that corner back there before, but both cars out front are just flying, using all of the course they can, using all of that steering lock, and banging those gears and hitting that rev limiter. Pastrana over the final jump and out across the line. He books himself a place in the final. Tanner Faust can't quite do anything about it. Pastrana punches the air. He is happy with that one. Faust in second. And here comes the limping. Oh, there goes the rest of the rubber. Arpin across the line in third. And uh, I don't think that Chris Atkinson's going to make it to the finish. What a race that was. Oh, for sure. But again, you're seeing another car have a deficit there of a flat tire. Opposing side to, to what Ken had, but uh, another Ford with another flat. I don't think it's a Ford problem. I think it's just adjusting to the course. That was the hit from Atco, who was sent spinning around by Steve Arpin. I guess that happens in wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. Yeah, that is pushing the envelope. <laughs> Here's a look at the results then, and it is Travis Pastrana who advances through to the final. Tanner Faust, Steve Arpin and Chris Atkinson will have to go again in the last chance qualifier. But let's hear from Travis. He's down with Nicky Shields. Travis Pastrana, that was an absolutely epic battle there with your old teammate Tanner Faust. 
But were you worried at any point? You know, you still had your joker to play towards the end. Were you worried that maybe you just hadn't done enough to stay out in front? I was actually pretty sure I didn't have enough to stay out in front. Uh, Tanner's amazing. Arpin, man, it's hard because this we designed this track specifically so that the fastest way around, you leave the insides open. So you want to be able to put time on the guys behind you, but you also don't want to leave the, those insides open. So uh, I was able to get around Arpin. Man, th these Subarus are absolutely amazing. I smashed Arpin in the first turn. We didn't get a puncture at the Yokohama, so stoked on that. But I just, man, I'm, I'm happy. Everyone seems like they're having fun, and we made the final. Now it's a race for the teams to get their cars ready for the last chance qualifier. Two critical spots left in the final. You're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series for Nitro Rallycross. What is considered the most progressive track in the history of Rallycross has been designed by Travis Pastrana, but as is often the case, not everything is going exactly as planned. Nikki Shields is on the track with more. Now, we've seen quite a few punches over the course of the day, and we think that one of the reasons causing them could be due to this metal ramp. If the car just catches it in the wrong way, it's causing a slow puncher. Now, that is far from ideal for the drivers, costing them vital time. And of course, you do not want to be doing a 100-foot jump when you've got a puncher. Well, Reese, there's the effect of some of the troubles these drivers are having. Yeah, I don't personally feel that the sole blame is the steel ramp. This would only give you a flat on the right side of the course as you're sliding up and over the ramp. I feel that it's the, the course degrading and the ruts that are developing, causing flats on both sides. Well, let's learn more about how you design a track like this. Nitro Rallycross basically takes motor racing, adds the motocross and action sports element of jumping, the NASCAR element of huge berms, the streetcar element of going both directions, and then also having pavement, having dirt, having gravel. This course has got to be absolutely perfect. So Trav and the whole crew here, they went through and they took everything to an extreme last year, and now they stepped it up again this year. The cool thing about what Travis has done, he goes to all of us and goes, what do you think we should change, how we can improve it? And so all the drivers here, he had an input. He really does involve everyone in the track building concept. Should there be a solid something in between the... No, I don't think so. Okay. Doesn't matter. I don't think so. All right, perfect. There's so many new characteristics to this racetrack. The gap jump, we can finally do it. To me, rally cars are supposed to jump. And I raced in the World Rallycross Championship, and their jumps were crap. So it's great to come here and have Travis build one of the best rallycross tracks in the world with huge jumps. The big gap jump, uh, that's a very special place. That, that doesn't exist anywhere else in the world of rallycross. The track is so different to whatever else I've raced at. It's so technical, it's so many bumps and crests and, and velodromes and, and jumps that normally on a racetrack you have one or two of those. Here it's in every corner. You come out of turn one and you hit this huge berm and then you hit a, a tabletop and you're sliding sideways. So, so you're sliding through the berm, take off, and you're sliding in the next berm and you go like inches from the guardrail on the outside. It's just like a roller coaster, but you're just hoping not to flip. It's epic in that it mixes the fun of motocross and supercross with what Travis loves about driving. This course should make for some great racing. If we can continue to build these tracks that are challenging for the drivers, that are exciting for the drivers, that's even 10 times more exciting for the fans. So I really feel like this sport can continue to grow. Well, this superb course has already created some incredibly exciting racing, and we have one last chance for drivers to qualify for the final. Let's go down to Nikki. Well, Tana Faust, I mean, it was brilliant for us. In terms of the show, it was amazing to see you battling it out there with Travis Pastrana, but obviously you narrowly missed out. Yeah, it's really all or nothing in those uh, challenge races. You got to win um, in order to go to the final. It puts us on the front row of the LCQ, but... Um, you know, it was it was a hard race. It's uh, I had a really good launch and I got stuck basically between Travis and Arpin and, and that's nowhere to be. Um, nice guys, give, don't get me wrong, but I didn't want to be there. So I took the, uh, the tabletop. Um, that cost you a few seconds overall, which really was the difference with Travis coming into the to the very end once he took the Joker. It was an exciting finish, uh, but still would have loved to have that win. But uh, moving on to the LCQ, we have a good position. Exactly. So, you mean, you really don't have much time to get prepared for the LCQ. You can see the team behind getting your car ready. How do you suddenly prepare with a quick turnaround time for that race? It, you never know how much damage there is. Yeah. And um, I guess I caught a tire stack or something that uh, tore the fender off and possibly more. 
So yeah, that's a lot of busy people over there. Um, they're, they're pros at Andretti though. This is what they do. So I have absolutely no uh, worry that this is going to be 100% in the next three minutes. Excellent. That's what we like to hear. Car ready in three minutes. Tana, good luck. Thanks very much. The clock continues to tick with only two more drivers to make the start grid for the final. The last chance qualifier when we return. You're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series for Nitro Rallycross. Four drivers have advanced to the final and now five racers must battle for the remaining two spots in the last chance qualifier. For more, Nikki Shields is on the grid. Well, it's a pretty tense moment for these drivers. The final checks are going on just before they make their way out to the grid for the last chance qualifier. That's exactly what it is. It is the last chance for these drivers to prove themselves. Only two will go through to the final and we've got big names battling it out. Ken Block, Tanner Faust, Steve Arpin. Let's find out who'll be going through to the final. So these are the five drivers battling it out for the final two spots in the final. Cabot Bigham and Tanner Faust on the front row. Ken Block in third with Steve Arpin and Chris Atkinson in fourth and fifth. Once again, it's going to be a four lap race around this course. You have to take the joker lap once and it's the top two that advance through to the final. This really is the, the last chance, Reese. It really is, and the Volkswagens on the front row here, they are just so impressive off the line. But, you know, it's anyone's game here. It's gonna be strategy into that first corner of when do you play that last, or that, that joker lap. Keep it in your back pocket, or do you throw it out there straight away? So they're underway, down into the first corner. Tanner Faust out in front through that sharp left-hander, and immediately Chris Atkinson has gone for the tabletop then. Right at the start, he's splitting his strategy to try and get some clear air. Here they come to the drop jump, and third and fourth have gone for the joker lap as well. That is Ken Block and Cabot Bigham. So they have gone through underneath the tunnel. So that means it's Tanner Faust out in front, Arpin in second, Up in trying to get ahead of Faust with Chris Atkinson there in third place. Yeah, you can see Tanner here, he's just driving so clean, so smart, but, but very defensive as well, holding that pack up. Uh, a little bit, just trying not to get a puncher, I don't believe. <laughs> Ken is still pretty wild and very aggressive in behind him. You're seeing a little bit of separation. Tanner tried to run a little wide here and use the cushion on the outside. Uh, this, this is going to be an exciting race. Atkinson is just there, ready to pounce. So, across the line comes Faust, ahead of Steve Arpin in second, and then it is Akko in third place, the former World Rally driver. And he is trying to find a way past Steve Arpin, not quite able to get through there. Then it's a bit of a gap back, as you say, to Ken Block and Cabot Bigham, who have both done the joker lap. Pulling to the left there go the two leaders, so that means Steve Arpin is on the joker now, underneath the tunnel, and that again gives Tanner Faust just a little bit of clear air as he comes through that huge banked turn, redesigning the course a little bit, but uh, that won't cause him too much trouble. <laughs> Using every inch of the course there, Tanner, moving those tires out of the way, and you can see he's actually adjusting his driving style a little bit, using a bit more handbrake, getting the car rotated, squaring it off, getting that power to the ground on those corner exits. How much are you looking in the mirrors and deciding yourself when to take the joker lap? How well can you judge when someone is four or five seconds behind? Yeah, for the most part, you want to try to keep it again in your back pocket to the end of the race. You want to have the group bunch up together to where there's only a coverage, say, you can throw a blanket over the top three cars, one, two, three seconds. At that point, the advantage of the joker lap is going to give you that advantage. Maybe not just pass one, but you may pass more than one, maybe all three. So Tanner Faust out in front in the VW, swings it to the right. Does he take the joker this time? No, he goes for the big drop again, as does Chris Atkinson behind. So those top two still yet to take their joker. Ken Block is looking in a good little position here in third place at the moment, but he has taken his joker, so he's ahead of Steve Arpin. Cabot Bigham, I think, might be in trouble, might even be out of the race because he... Uh, appears to have disappeared from the fight. So Tanner Faust on the penultimate lap, he and Chris Atkinson have to take the Joker on the final lap. Across the line last time, the gap was 3.4 seconds. It's about a four second time loss to take the Joker. It's gonna be tight this. It is, Tanner swings wide there, but he still seems very clean, very in control. It looks like he's got this one in the bag. Here he comes then across the line, Tanner Faust to start the final lap. Second place is Chris Atkinson, and then there is Ken Block in third. So when the two leaders take their joker lap, where will they emerge with regards to Ken Block? It's the top two in this last chance qualifier that will progress through to the final. So here, both Faust and Atkinson will swing it left underneath the tunnel, 
and Ken Block will fly over the top. There he goes, Block over the top, spectacular shot, and Block's in front. He wasn't very happy. Oh, there's a bit of contact between Faust and Block, but they keep it together, and it looks as though it's going to be those two that will advance through to the final. Block wasn't happy with his starting position, was he, for this race, but it looks like he's done it. That's an impressive couple of laps by Ken. You know, Tanner was driving really clean and tidy, maybe a little too clean and tidy, but right now, these boys need to work together to get both of these cars to the finish for those one-two spots. Through the final left-hander they come, just a little jump to finish off, and Ken Block, after a difficult day so far, books himself a place in the final of Nitro Rallycross. Really good drive from him. Across the line is Tanner Faust in second. Chris Atkinson just missing out on a spot in the final. But what a performance from Ken Block, third on the grid, to take the win. Unbelievable. He just put in a solid two laps there, brought it back to Tanner, shoved the nose in there. Tanner tries to repeat, give him a little nudge back, but ultimately those guys are racing for their LCQ. And so those are the two that advance through to the final. That is the end of the day's running for Cabot Bigham, Steve Arpin and Chris Atkinson. But Ken Block and Tanner Faust, after a hard-fought last-chance qualifier, advance through to the final of the 2019 Nitro Rallycross. When we return, it's the championship race, which includes Patrick Sandell and Kevin Hansen, who will take to the track for the first time today. You're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series. This is Nitro Rallycross from the Utah Motorsport Campus, and it's time for the final competition of the day, the 2019 Championship Race. Let's check in with Nikki Shields. Thanks, guys. So this is the moment that we have been waiting for. In just a few moments, the cars are going to make their way across to the starting grid for the final of today. Now, they've got to put everything they learn into practice because, of course, there is only one winner. I think if I had to, uh, you know, put my bets on someone, I'm going to go with Kevin Hansen. Kevin put in a superb performance in qualifying. He's starting towards the front of the grid. Remember as well that he hasn't had to compete in all the other events today, which means his car is in pristine condition. He's also had the time to really get his thoughts together and focus on the final. But only time will tell who is crowned the winner today. So here's how we got to where we are now. The two fastest drivers from qualifying, they advanced straight through to the final, and that was Patrick Sandell and Kevin Hansen. Then the remaining eight drivers went through to the challenger races. The winners of both of those went through, Travis Pastrana and Timmy Hansen. And then the last chance qualifier saw Ken Block and Tanner Faust advance through to the final race. This is an impressive grid, but I have to go with Patrick Sandell and that Subaru. They've poured everything that they've taken from their stage rally setup, which is all dirt, to a course here that is pretty much all dirt. Second to that, my number's on the Hanson boys. We are very good at driving together. Although both of us want to win, we are also driving as a team. So it's not like there are team orders that we let one pass. We just drive together to, for the team and the both of us to have the best results. So. It is going to be a big advantage to, to be there with him and drive together, race together, and try to grab that win, one of us. Kevin Hansen will be starting second on the grid directly in front of his brother, Timmy Hansen. But there's been a few more course changes before the start of this final. Nikki. Hey guys, yeah, just to give you a little bit of an update. Now, we have seen quite a few punches over the course of the event. Well, the race officials have in fact removed the metal ramp at turn one that we believed to be causing those problems. Great for the drivers and also great for us because we expect to see plenty of action in that first corner. The first corner then is going to be all important in this final six laps for this final run. You have to take the joker lap once and you have to take the tabletop once. And it's Patrick Sandell on pole position for Sweden. His compatriot Kevin Hansen alongside him on the front row. Travis Pastrana is in third. Hansen, Block and Faust round out what is a pretty impressive grid here, Reese. It really is. Front of the grid is where you really want to be. But as we saw in that LCQ, Ken came from nowhere. Let's see if he can do it again. So the final of the Nitro Rallycross is about to begin. Away they go. Really good start from Kevin Hansen. He moves into the lead. His brother Timmy looks to have dropped back at the start. Sandell slots into second place. Who? Oh, a bit of a nudge. Hansen almost sent spinning around. We've got three cars going for the tabletop on this first lap. Ken Block kicking up all sorts of 
debris into the air as they are going to go three under, three over here at the first jump. Spectacular stuff and a frantic start. Oh, everyone's pushing and fighting big time there. Into that first corner, a little bit of a break check, a bump wide by Sandell on Hanson. Now they're starting to clean themselves up, get sorted, get organized. Let's put some race strategy into play, boys. So Kevin Hansen out in front. Then it is Sandell in second place. Travis Pastrana is in third in the other Subaru. And then it's the three behind that have taken the tabletop on this first lap of six, winding their way through the left-hander over this little off-camber corner. And then the jump that takes them out over the start, finish straight again. Ken Block's got a bit of damage on his right front. He's running in fourth at the moment. But Kevin Hansen's got a pretty reasonable lead, actually, as he comes into the first corner. Sandell is not too close to him. And this is the first race for these top two all day. Yeah, they're, they've really got themselves in a great position right now. And you can see on that first lap, everyone's just trying to figure out the track. You can see there's corners there that they put water down. The track's a little slipperier than what they've experienced before. So they're just trying to come to grips, get a good balance and get a good position. So Pastrana takes the tabletop. It looks as though Timmy Hansen is taking the joker lap. So he's the first driver to take the joker lap as they come through that big banked right-hander. There is Ken Block in front of Travis Pastrana. But the two leaders, Hansen and Sandell, looking fairly comfortable at the moment. Not under a huge amount of pressure, but they've still got to take their joker lap. And can last year's champion, Timmy Hansen, now he's taken the joker lap and in a bit of clear air, start to pull back in. It's impressive to see that Peugeot work. He's just full song on the rev limiter, banging gears, flick of the handbrake, so aggressive. This is true rallycross style. And you're seeing it here in the US against the US guys that are usually a little bit more cleaner, a little bit more tidier because of all those pavement courses that you're used to. But Hansen putting on a clinic right now. Very impressive stuff from Kevin Hansen. Still second place for Sandell as they come over the huge drop jump once more. No one taking the joker lap this time around. I think Tanner Feist, Faust might have just taken it as they come through the banked right-hander and then swing left again. Yes, there is Tanner Faust in the VW, emerging back onto the course, having taken his joker lap. But Kevin Hansen is driving a flawless race, but can he continue to hold off Patrick Sandell and the rest of the pack to be crowned the 2019 Nitro Rallycross champion? The final laps when we return. You're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series, and Ken Block has got a front right puncture. His tyre is almost completely off the rim in the final of the Nitro World Rallycross, and I don't think he's going to be on the podium here, Reese. No, that's a shame. Obviously, one of those ruts there is, is taking that tyre off the bead, and, and that's one of the challenges you're seeing here on this course, again, with, with the course running up. You, you've got to work with your pit. You've got to choose that tyre pressure that is right to not give up grip, but stay on the rim. Patrick Sandell from second place flashes underneath the tunnel. He's taking his joker lap. Race leader Kevin Hansen is yet to take his. And all of this means Timmy Hansen has only got up into fifth place. So last year's winner is running in fifth spot at the moment. His brother Kevin out in front. We are on lap four of six. So Kevin still has two more chances to take it. This is Ken Block. I don't think he's, well, He'll probably keep going to the end of the race, but to no real avail. Huge slide from Kevin Hansen. He gets so sideways at all these corners, doesn't he? It's such a different style in Europe, and it's exactly what he's brought to here. You know, for the most part, the US races, again, have such a higher percentage of pavement. You need to set the vehicle up on sway bars, on differential settings, on spring rates, and you need to drive to complement that tire. In Europe, this course is just like the European courses. Aggressive, sideways, lots of RPM, banging gears and having fun. <laughs> so here comes Kevin Hansen. He takes the tabletop then. So just the joker for him to do on the final run through. And he's going to be very, very close to Patrick Sandell in second place when he does take it on the final lap. Travis Pastrana is by himself in third place. He actually has got to still take the joker as well. So that could promote Timmy Hansen into to the top three. Really impressive performance from the two brothers whose father Kenneth Hansen was a rallycross legend in the 1980s and 90s. 14 championship wins for their father. And Kevin Hansen is looking to carry on that lineage. There's Patrick Sandell in second place then. It's all coming down to this final joker. Across the lap comes Kevin Hansen to start the final tour. What advantage does he have over Sandell? It's 3.86 seconds, and it's about four seconds for the joker lap. Yeah, it's, it's going to go half a second either way here. I think Sandell still has a fighting chance, but 
Hansen is driving so clean, so aggressive right now. He's in control. I think he might just squeak it out. So here comes Sandel over the tabletop. He'll swing it to the left and the two will emerge back onto the track right together. And Hansen's in front. Kevin Hansen holds on to the lead, but he gets it super sideways. How aggressive is Sandel going to be through these final couple of corners? Takes huge Come speed on, into that left-hander. Now the final couple of jumps, nose dives into the dirt. There's one more overtaking spot, really, and it's coming into this left-hander, just over the crest, swinging it through the right, then into the left. Sandel is hanging it out to dry. Kevin Hansen goes defensive. Sandel gets on the power. Hansen with the back end all out, but I think he's going to do enough to come through the final corner and win the 2019 Nitro Rallycross Championship. What a race from Kevin Hansen. Second across the line for Patrick Sandel. But Kevin is happy with that one. Oh, from the start to the finish, what an impressive drive all the way through. And Sandel throwing some victory donuts. He didn't get the, the final or the, the win. He didn't get number one, but he's throwing some victory donuts anyway. He's enjoyed himself out there, hasn't he, Patrick Sandel? <laughs> Absolutely shredding those tires. And this is a fantastic demonstration of the car control that we see out on circuit. But Kevin Hansen on top in the Nitro Rallycross Championship. Here's a look at the replay. This is how close they were right at the end. Impressive, and that's going to be a great result for the Hanson family, everyone involved, um, from his father to his mother and, and his brother being on course as well. Impressive effort all round. So a Swedish 1-2-3, Kevin Hansen, Patrick Sandell and Timmy Hansen on the podium. Tanner Faust, Travis Pastrana and Ken Block missing out. Pastrana dropped down a couple of places actually in the final few laps. But what celebrations here for, for our top three, Reese? Yeah, amazing, you know, just to see these guys come over here and just, just dominate all weekend long and, and really kind of put it to the American drivers. Um, it, it's skill, um, it's commitment, and it's amazing teamwork. Timmy took the win last year, but it's his younger brother, Kevin, who is with Nikki Shields this year. Well, Kevin Hansen, you're absolutely dripping wet in champagne. Very well deserved. I mean, what an epic race there. It was virtually a photo finish between you and Patrick. How do you feel? Oh, just amazing. I haven't driven a lap since qualifying, and. And when I hit that start, you know, it, it was gold. It was gold. And I took Patrick straight away. I got some bumps into turn two, but then I, I felt free. So I pushed like crazy those six laps. It's the best six laps I've ever made. And, you know, when I came out in front of Patrick, I saw he was just behind, and I knew I cannot do any mistake. I need to continue pushing for that half lap. And when I crossed the finish line, ah, oh, what a feeling. Congratulations. Enjoy the celebrations with mum, dad, and your brother. Yeah, huge celebrations tonight for the Hansen family, the youngest in the incredible rallycross lineage, victorious after a stunning set of races. Sal, it's back to you. Thanks, Jack, and thanks to all of you for joining us here at Utah Motorsports Park. Swedish domination at the 2019 Nitro Rallycross with Kevin Hansen taking first, Patrick Sandell coming in second, and Kevin's brother and 2018 winner, Timmy Hansen, rounding out the podium. The only rookie driver in this year's competition, Kevin Hansen came to Utah to prove that the Hansen brothers continue to be the dominant force in rally, no matter the location. After older brother gets the win here last year, Kevin was like, hey, I would like some of that first place action in 2019. He wins his qualifier and in the final drives a flawless race, capturing the whole shot and never giving up the lead. He assured us that a Hanson would be a winner in back-to-back -back years. For that, Kevin Hanson gets our signature moment. Once again, thank you for joining us today and be sure to follow us in any manner that you get social. On behalf of our entire crew, including Jack Nichols, Reese Millen, Nikki Shields, and myself, we will see you next time.